when it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market at Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374-0409. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property, offering expert advice on preparing your home for the market. Let's go! Good evening, you're very welcome. This is Paul Cooney on the Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. And tonight, one from Rangers, one from Celtic. Andy Walker, Celtic legend, is with us and Scotland cap of the past. And Jamie Murphy as well, who's got Scotland caps, both of them. Looking forward to the game tomorrow night. The headline tonight, Andy, of course, is that Scott McKenna has withdrawn from the squad today. We heard about Grant Handley yesterday. Do you think Steve Clark will bring anyone in ahead of the game tomorrow? I'm not sure he will. I think he's pretty much focused on what he wants to do now in the next few months. Get everyone's minds on the uh, Euros coming up. And obviously we want to get back to winning ways. We've played some... Some really good nations in the in the recent past, but uh, not get good results. We want to get back to winning ways just to give us that boost before we, we kick off the real thing. Jamie, there's nothing like it. It's a friendly, but we're so close now, under three months away from the championship over in Germany. And we know how tough it is to get on that plane. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult one to get there, yeah. but they've worked really hard. They've won the games that they've had to win uh, and they've got the whole country country buzzing for the summer really sure have Scotland fans what are you thinking have you got your line up for tomorrow night 08 08 17 17 700 elsewhere Andy we said yesterday Real Hitati got a run out for Celtic a bounce game with St Mirren and we believe he played 45 minutes 2-2 draw yeah it just seems to be small steps for him 45 minutes just on his way back to fit, uh, full fitness you wonder what sort of gamble uh, Celtic Brendan Rodgers will take with him in the, in the coming weeks because when he plays I think he's a huge difference to the Celtic team It's going to be some run in Rangers have got problems as well but Hatati's been missed big time by Celtic Yeah he was wonderful for them last year this year has been a bit stop start with injuries and they've certainly missed him so they'll be looking to get him back as quick as possible Borna Barisic it looks as though he's off to Turkey there's a big offer in from Transbospor it's for him of course because he's a free agent come the summer um, a good run for Rangers but you've sensed this season that with Ridvan doing well for them that he's he wasn't going to sign a new contract or maybe not even be offered one yeah I think probably his time has come to, to move on he's been, a, he's been a great servant over the last couple of years won some big games obviously uh, won the SPL at one point so I, d- I don't think he goes uh, with any bad wishes from, from any Rangers fans anyway I, I think he's been really good yeah. I, I mm. think he's crossing uh, just as a left back a defender he's been really good it's probably not the best business move to let someone as, as good as that go to the end of their contract and let them move for nothing. Ideally, you want players, any player who's been who's been there for that amount of time, just uh, try and get some money for him be, before he comes to the end of his contract. Guys, you've seen the headlines today. Ben Var, that's one of the headlines this morning. Refs can't get decisions right. Fed up fans want rid of it. Motherwell, the latest club, they're furious about what happened last weekend. Um... They were denied a goal, Lennon Miller, which was a, a great goal. And also they felt that uh, Graham Shinney got away with one at the other end. The inconsistency yet again. Andy, you've looked at them. What do you think? Yeah, they've every right to complain. And they're just the latest uh, club, uh, a long line of clubs, I think, that um, are complaining about how uh, the referees are being guided and uh, some of the baffling decisions that the referees come up with. Um, I mean, they haven't, Thankfully, they haven't thrown any referee under the bus, uh, unlike Rangers or, or Celtic. I think they went a step too far. Um, but uh, there's real problems with the whole interpretation of our... And I'll go back to what we were sold initially. You know, minimum interference, maximum benefit. It'll be used sparingly. Uh, it's none of that at all. We we go looking for, for problems and uh, it's not the way to use it. Is there a growing momentum? Something you asked me in the office. Do you think more and more clubs are now they're not having it? Yeah, it would be remarkable if it got to the stage where the club said, look, we're just going to bin this because it's not working. Uh, I'm not sure that is the best road to go down. You, you've got to remember, there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with the technology 
the interpretation of decision making, the, the lack of clarity, uh, the lack of transparency, the lack of consistency in some of the decisions is uh, it's just remarkable. And Jamie, they've not been helped. The whole game has not been helped by the changes from IFAB about what is a handball, what's a penalty. It, the last couple of years has been chaos. Yeah, it's, it's hard to keep up with all the rule changes. <laughs> I mean, if you watch watch the goal that got disallowed at the weekend for Mullow, it's hard to even see now whether it's a handball or not. And at the time it was given as a goal, so we were always told that if it's if it's too hard to change the decision, they won't change it. So if we still can't tell the now then why has he changed it on the pitch I'm sure that's why they're, they're upset Are you glad you don't have it in the championship where you are? Yeah yeah. I'm not a fan I'll be honest uh, but you know the whole world's gone to it so yeah. it's something that we're probably going to have to get used to a bit more in this country and whether it's the, the usage of it or different kind of things that it, it's used for I'm not entirely sure I don't know what you think uh, Jamie but a lot of people talking about getting the right decision I don't know with the amount of subjectivity that you get in football whether you ever get the right decision what what you need is a strong firm fair referee who makes a decision on the pitch and unless he's made an absolute ricket you need to just stick with it because some decisions are neither right nor wrong they'll always be controversial and you need to go with the man in the middle not to have it re-refereed and I think that's one of our biggest problems. We've had so many games re-refereed. We've seen referees looking like rabbits caught in their headlights with you know, the look on their face. They haven't given a decision. It's the most clear and obvious decision to give. And yet they opt out of it because they know someone is having a second look at it. The, the guidance, I fear the guidance that our refs have been given has been really poor. I think when it first came in, people thought this is going to take away all the bad decisions, everything's going to be great. Mm. Football's going to go the way of kind of computer, if you like, it's right and wrong. But it all comes down to a referee's decision. So has anything really changed? Used to be the referee gave the decision on the pitch, now he's going to a monitor and given a decision. That's the only difference. Yeah, we're, getting, we're getting decisions by committee. It's, it's an ugly look. It doesn't look good at all. Yeah, absolutely right, guys. The thing is, it's not an exact science. We thought it would be, but so much is interpretation. You yeah. s you see it one way, and I might see it slightly different. It can't Absolutely, and you're you're not right, and I'm not right. Mm. But yeah. you just have to give the authority to to the man in the middle. You cannot get away from controversy. The only right call is whether the ball has crossed the line, whether the guy is uh, offside. But even then, with the millimeters that you're looking at, um. We just haven't used it properly at all. And I think all of us who went to the presentation, we were sold a dummy. And was that Crawford Allen way back then? Yeah, listen, yeah. I've said it many times. It was very slick. It was very professional. But the idea that we would get minimum interference for maximum benefit, oh no, he'll only go to the pit side monitor when he's really made a, a terrible mistake. And, and people will look at it and think, oh, God, that's mm. great. VAR come in there and thankfully they've mm. they've they've made the right call there. It's um, That's not the case. It's not the case and it's an awful form of VAR that we've got. They want to go back frame after frame till they find something. Yeah. Y you would find it, Dreadful. wouldn't you? And listen, yeah. I I've done games in England and you look at what happened at West Ham last weekend. Mm. That's awful. Mm. Five and a half minutes to come to uh, a decision. So I know that there are still problems elsewhere I, I thought I saw a, a bit of really poor refereeing in the game that I did last weekend at Burnley where it looked as though it was an easy decision to give for a for a, for a penalty early on and the um, the problem was that it was uh, regging on the the Brentford uh, full back yeah. he didn't mm -hmm. he didn't make any attempt to go for the ball and he had to be given a red card and the penalty was given and it ruined the game a wee bit yeah. but um, you still get some poor refereeing wherever you go. What do you feel about the refereeing in Scotland? How can we go back now and scrap it? But most people... Well, what do you think? Give us a call. 0808 17 17 700. You hear Jamie Murphy playing at Air United now, played at Sheffield United, so many clubs down south. Rangers, of course, here. Motherwell. I'll we'll go through all a litany yeah, of a clubs. Few. Yeah, there's a few. And uh, Andy Walker. We've who, got a few yeah, clubs in common. I know, there's not Hibs, many you didn't. Uh -huh. Sheffield yeah. United, Air United, yeah. Motherwell. 
Yeah, all good teams. Yeah, all good teams. Oh eight, oh eight, seventeen, seventeen, seven hundred. Crawford Allen going at the end of the season. Andy, do you not think there was strange timing? Two months to go, business end of the season, and the SFA announced that the head of football operations is leaving. Yeah, and I, I don't know where the guidance comes from. Uh, does it come from uh, Crawford Allen himself? Does it come from the people who are sitting on IFAB? I mean, IFAB is, we, when I say we, I mean the UK, we've got a heavy influence there given uh, how many people sit on the uh, the lawmaking process. But VAR, VAR was meant to help our game and I think it's made a, a really poor spectacle. And uh, I think Motherwell actually made a really good point about uh, the lack of information to, to people that are actually inside the stadium. And I'll take you back to that experience, my one and only experience at Murrayfield a few yeah. mm -hmm. uh, weeks ago and the 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 speed in which the decision-making was on the big screens at Murrayfield was really impressive for everyone to see and hear. So rugby is ahead of football and that one shouldn't be the case, should it, Jamie? We should always be as the number one game in the country you'd hope we would be on it the, the TMO though does seem to work well in rugby I know it's different the way people respect the referee decisions more there don't they yeah uh, I'm glad I wasn't a, a microphone at the ref on Saturday our yeah. game just put it that way but yeah, what happened in your game uh, yeah. well, we got a penalty against us that I don't think it was a penalty it's the Inverness <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah I might have got a yellow card yeah, 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 the one she yeah. used earlier <laughs> Jamie <laughs> Um, but, and of course, yeah, it's not there. It was a big result for you, though, wasn't it, against uh, it was, Inverness? Yep. Yeah, it's so tight and, and the championship, you know, we're a couple of points off the bottom, then you win that game and now we're a couple of points off the playoffs. Uh, there's still plenty of games to go, so if we get in good form, you never know. You're at Hamden this weekend up against Queen's Park. Yep. Yeah, Queen's Park this weekend. Uh, another one of the games that are similar, if we're around the same position, same, same points, so... Every game's a big one at the minute. Scott Brown, still doing well. Is he, has he had a real go at you yet? Give us something from the... <laughs> he's not really shouted at me yet. Yeah. He might have shouted at a couple of others. Right, OK. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, he, he's been great since he came in. We've, we've got a real kind of identity and, and way of playing, so hopefully it keeps going. Yeah, one of the listeners, Jimmy, sent in a clip of Jamie scoring for Rangers against Air United. Final of 6-1, you completed the, the routes for Rangers, but Air, your old club, had scored first. But my goodness, the pace that he's got... And had well, no. still got it. Well, had. let's uh, we could Ten go, years hey, ago. we could go out there and check. <laughs> <laughs> Old Pollock Shaw's oh, Road. You ready? I would hope yeah. I would win that one. Yeah, you'd win this one here. I would imagine. Yeah. Oh eight oh eight seventeen seventeen seven hundred. What do you feel about VAR? Mother will have sent a video to uh, the SFA with their comments. It'll be interesting to see if there is going to be any reaction to that one. Uh, we're looking forward to the game tomorrow night. Netherlands against Scotland. It's um. It's quite a stadium, isn't it? The Johan Cruyff Stadium tomorrow. I'm not sure what the crowd is going to be. But Holland are one of the fancied sides for this summer. Yeah, I was actually a trackside reporter when we uh, lost 6-0 there. Yeah. Um, we'd won the first one, of course, with Faddy getting that goal at Hamden. And we, we thought we might be able to do something. But uh, we were well beaten in the end by a really good side. But you're, you're dead right. It's a fabulous arena. Any Scotland fan who's, who's going there will really love uh, the experience and I just hope we can give a good account of ourselves mm. because we want to go into this tournament on a bit of a high we, we've given the whole country I think a bit of a lift just by merely qualifying but we'd, we'd like to go there and make our mark and you know the, the best thing to do is to go off to a winning start against Germany that, that won't be mm. easy but I think it's something that we're capable of given, given how well we've played over the last couple of years Our own Barry Ferguson played in that game didn't he? Yeah. He said it He said it was 20 minutes into it and he was like, we're only 20 minutes in. And he said that was one of those games that we were really up yeah. against it. Especially after yeah. the hope from the first leg. Of course, well. yeah. And we were so unlucky not to qualify in those days. I, I sat yeah. very next to Pierre Van Hoydonk, who yeah, yeah. was a former teammate of mine. Yeah. Uh, and he was also at the game. Mm. And Yeah, he had a big smile on his face. He was, mm. uh, as Pierre was always very confident, he was absolutely convinced mm. they were going to go through in the end. I see another ex-teammate, was he? Mark Burchill? Uh, no, I didn't no, play with Mark. He was, he was after me. Well, he's off to Liverpool. He's going to be um, first signing of the new sporting director. He's set to be. It hasn't been announced yet, but that's what the speculation is because he's been with him before. Uh, Richard Hughes, of course, who also was in the Scotland squad. He was capped by Scotland. You 
come up against Never came him across him, no, older. but it's, yeah. uh, it's good to see Scots looking after Scots down south Indeed, at the big club. Yeah. What a job that is, Andy, sporting director at Liverpool. Yeah, huge. Yeah. You need to get most decisions right. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know the uh, importance of uh, the money being spent. Obviously, I mean, Liverpool are spending huge amounts of money, but to get uh, value for money is uh, just essential uh, these days. The, the level of competition down there, where Liverpool, Liverpool want to be, you know, competing with the, the Man Cities of this world. Arsenal are improving. I'm sure Man United will come back uh, in time, but um, and it's great to see Spurs uh, doing a yeah. wee bit more this season under Ange Postecoglou. But uh, the level of competition is uh, so good. Good to see Scott McTominay getting a goal at the weekend in that amazing game with Liverpool. Yeah, it was a brilliant watch. Yeah. I'm sure, he's all watched it. Yep. It's uh, FA Cup kind of brings day games. You know, sometimes in the Premier League it's a bit safe. Everyone's very tactical. Yeah. Then you get the odd cup game where you get a 4 3 or a 3 3 or something like that. So, yeah, it was good. good I, I, loved, I loved his sense of adventure. Mm -hmm. uh, the the manager, when he's taking off all his defenders, practically putting on so many attacking players, and it, it, it took you back to the time when uh, Fergie was in charge yeah, of Man United of and being yeah. so bold and taking all these risks yeah. and just try, trying to get a goal to keep yourself in the game. It was. As Jamie said, it was a brilliant watch. I think they had one defender on the pitch at the end, which amazing. tells you how much yeah. they were going for. Absolutely, Absolutely amazing for sure. And I'm at the Diallo, former Rangers player, um, getting the winner for Man United right yeah, at the end. I've seen yeah. him play a couple of times with Sunderland. Sunderland. He was he was definitely the, the top man there alongside um, Paddy Roberts. Yeah. But uh, yeah, going back to Man United, and, and now he's made his mark, so... I mean, as soon as he's free from suspension, everybody will want to see him play. Everybody will want to see him come on the pitch and and uh, try and make a name for himself at Old Trafford. With, right. a, with yeah. a bit of stupidity at the end, getting sent off. I, and I, I know, I know. I know. this is that special moment. Let's go on the lines. Callum is on, uh, a Rangers fan in Ayrshire. Hi, Callum. Hi there. Good evening. How are you doing? Hi, Callum. Hi, Callum. Uh, not too bad yourself. Yeah, good, thank you. So, you're talking about VAR as we are. Yeah, I kind of disagree with the panel's view there. I think, uh, I think with Varner, we probably get to the right decision most of the time. I think there is one or two where they make the wrong decisions. So I think it could be improved rather than scrapped. I think what, what happened recently, up. Callum, yeah. is that they come out with some sort of review and they said that the maybe 13 decisions that were wrong. Uh, in my view, Callum, honestly, you could triple that. Uh, there is no way that there were just 13 poor decisions, and I'm talking about glaring errors. Um, so I would disagree with you, having covered Scottish football since VAR came in. I think, the, um, I think we've had a really poor product, and I can't, I can't name any club, I can't name any manager who said, this has been great for Scottish football, thank God we've got it. Everyone seems to think... We've got so much work to do to to make it uh, beneficial to everyone. Callum, how do you think yeah. we, we can improve it? Because obviously you want to. Everyone does want it to work. Yeah, I think this see when it goes to the cameras, it goes to like a, just a picture. Mm -hmm. and it should be a roller in time with the referees and the screens. I think that's when you see the penalties and it's just like... That's a good point. We've got a handball, yeah. for example. See if you see it in real time, it looks a lot worse than what it is in a picture. It looks a lot better than what it is in a picture. So I think if they were to go to the screens in real time and just show the full clip rather than just show one or two pictures would make a whole lot of difference. I think that's a great point. I think if you get the referee to watch it as it happened, not slow it down, not put a picture on the screen, then they'll get more of a sense of, well, maybe that's maybe that's the right You're decision. Right. You, you, if you slow it down and take the picture, it always looks worse. It yeah. does. So it's, it's a great point. And I, and I definitely think... Well, it's not going anywhere, I don't think so. It's it's going to get tweaked. Uh -huh. and, but it should be tweaked to what everyone wants it to be, not what referees and the big wigs want it to be. Yeah. And I think Motherwell's point of, you know, engaging with their fans, what do you think? And they've all most of them have come back and said it's, it's not it's not helped to our uh, match day experience. And I think most people would uh, would feel that way no matter what club 
clubs mm. fans you spoke to. The freeze frame is yeah. a bit of a killer, isn't it? It's a bit like line of duty. You know, they always get one bit and they pursue that against the person. They keep going on about that. Yeah. But look at that, it looks terrible. Yeah. And, and it does look terrible. We, I, I think we just need to get away from the fact that we've got to get everything right. It, it's Football is not like that. Football is not yeah, right decisions. It's... Just now. I still think the majority of the time Mr. Barley got this out. You, you look back to the diving and stuff, you used to go on the handballs that you were given. I think there is a lot, lot less of that now, especially with the diving. But I think if we were to improve the, I feel the short and real time, and maybe give the fans an indication of what they're looking at inside the stadiums, it would basically not fix it completely, but you would you'd iron out a lot of the problems they're currently having. Yeah, the communication could be better, Andy. Communication's yeah. got to be better. I mean, I'm. Uh, Callum's talking about diving. I mean, I'm, my, my mind's just thinking about a game I was at where James Forrest was booked for diving. Uh, Lauren Shanklin was booked for, for diving last weekend. He appealed it, but didn't. he wasn't successful. Uh, James Forrest was earlier this season. Um, I, I, I just think we need better referees. We need stronger officials in the middle of the park making strong, firm, fair decisions. And I'll go back to it. You're never going to get everything right. Uh, it's ne football has never been that way we're obsessed with getting yeah. the right call you just need to give the authority to the to the man in the middle and you'll still have that controversy if you took away VAR from the last Hearts Celtic game I think you would probably have just that one call Celtic's penalty that the referee gave which I thought was never a penalty yeah. you would think yeah, that's a yeah. really poor sure. decision but everything yeah. else the yellow card to uh, yeah. Yang, hmm? you, you'd go with that. Oh, sorry, no, you'd yellow. go with that. Sorry, yellow. He gave yeah. a yellow. The referee gave a yellow. Yeah. The referee didn't see the Hearts penalty. It wouldn't have been given. And actually, he would have given the Lauren Shanklin goal that was, I don't know, a millimetre offside. Yeah. And I think most football fans would, would be happy mm. for, for that to stand. Absolutely. I think we all agree on that one. Yeah, but I was just going to say... Uh, I think what goes under the radar sometimes is the amount of cameras in Scotland. Mm. I know there's less than the Premier League down in England. Mm. So, for example, at Fur Park, the stand doesn't go all the way down that side. Yeah. So they were looking at the, the the incident from the camera at the halfway line. I mean, we're all morning at refs and, <laughs> and I get all that kind of thing, but Quite far I, think, I yeah. think they can help them out by adding the amount of cameras that are, are at certain games anyway. Well, that... That would be another cost, and there's yeah. no way you're going to get uh, all the clubs in agreement to pay more. I, I've I've listened to Dave Martindale. You listened to Stuart Kettlewell at the weekend. You've listened to other managers talking about uh, VAR and the baffling decisions that their team has had. It's uh, it's pretty much affected everyone. Callum, final question from me to you: How are you feeling about the season as a Rangers fan? Are you going to win the league? Uh, I think it'll be tight. I think it'll come down to the two fan games, really. I think uh, they'll be signed up, really, at the end of the day. Thanks for the call. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Looking to sell property in Glasgow? Call Kayleigh and the team on 0141 374 0409. Let's go! Thursday night, Paul Cooney with Jamie Murphy, former Rangers star, and Andy Walker. I was going to say veteran of... Uh, no. <laughs> You wouldn't be far wrong there. No, I'm not a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> when I first got called a veteran doing the Lord Provost, last supper, Lord, uh, the burn supper, I was raging being uh, called a veteran. I don't mind. Yeah, you don't mind at all, Andy. I've yep. been around the block. Just, I was nearly laughing when Jamie said about the number of cameras, it's almost as bad as when you were fronting <laughs> not the Scots sport. When, when I did oh, it with Jim White and all that, the number, we had a great no, camera. <laughs> I, got, I got sent some, some yeah. picture this week from a... Twitter feed of yep. me, and, me and Grant Stott, uh, the last Big presenters Grant, of Scott yeah. Sport. Of course. Yeah, yeah oh, I did see that. I think that, he mentioned yeah. his hair at that one point. Me, that took me back. Right, next caller is Jim White who says, Andy, how did you manage <laughs> you to, to kill off the longest running sports programme in the world? Uh, we made Arthur proud and it's funny because that's what Arthur Montford said when he, when he passed on. Just... Just look after the programme, and about 12 months later, we, we were all made redundant. It, it, nothing to do with your <laughs> presentation skills. Well, not many people presented it when you think about oh, it. Was over great. The years. Arthur, it was a great Jim, experience. Jim Delahunt. Because at that time, YouTube. we had, yeah. um, well, first of all, I was going to Celtic and Rangers games yeah. in Champions League mm -hmm. when, I mean, one on a Tuesday, one on a Wednesday, when Celtic and Rangers were yeah. both flying high. 
And then I got the opportunity to present it for a couple of years, and that was yeah. when you know Rangers got to the UEFA Cup final in Manchester. Right. You went all they the went, way. They you went presented. all the way. Yeah. yeah, I remember you anchoring it. Uh, some year, do you remember that year when Rangers went all the way? I do. Yes, uh, I may or may not have went down. We did have ah, a game yeah. on the Saturday. So uh, who uh, were you with at the time? I was at Motherwell. Yeah, of course. You would never go down to the game. Traffic no, was no. murder, wasn't it? No, no. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a late return. Who was your that boss way. at Motherwell at that time? Yeah, uh, it was Mark McGee. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We, well, actually, we actually played Rangers at the, at the game after. That's right. What was the score? Uh, no, no. Oh, was it one was each, it? maybe? It was yeah. definitely a draw. Mm-hmm. Former Mark, teammate of mine. Yeah, Mark McGee. Mark McGee. He was great. Yeah, wasn't I was he? at Celtic. Really great. I mean, to sometimes you can, you can play alongside a guy who's got so much experience mm-hmm. and he just wants to impart all of his knowledge and he passed on so many little nuggets, little snippets to me. I was I was very grateful. Was great, a great coach on the pitch. He was great for myself, maybe being a young kid. Uh, he kind of had a track record of bringing people through. He made that, he made that, I was quite aware of that, Did talking he? about yeah. Robbie, Robbie Keane and people like that. He brought uh, through maybe no, no big names, though. No. <laughs> stuff like that. So, Is that what he would say? Yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah he was quite yeah. open about it. And yeah. I, I actually spoke to him not, I say not too long ago, it was yeah. a few years ago now, because he, he lives down in Brighton, so, uh, and his son was a big Brighton fan, so right, yeah. seen him a bit. Robbie Keane, what a player. But Mark McGee, what a player. Brilliant. And a, a, a winner. He, Aberdeen. he went Aberdeen. abroad, yeah. played with Hamburg. I remember. I remember him scoring for Scotland against England at mm-hmm. Hamden. Uh, but he had, he had so many highs in his career, top class. Certainly was. I remember they used to sing a song about me. He was a wee bit hefty. You know, <laughs> he's worth a million pounds. You remember it well. Uh, yeah, dear. he was some player. Old Dingus. Yeah. Uh, Aberdeen, any word? Just looking to see if there's a puff of smoke. Who is going to be the new manager? Uh, no, there's nothing today. Have you heard anything, Jimmy? Who is going to be? I think you have. You look as no. though you've got, yeah. <laughs> I was good, just going to say one of the names I heard mentioned was Mark Fotheringham. Uh, right. You know, he's got experience mm-hmm. down south in uh, Huddersfield, I think he was, mm-hmm. uh, over in Germany as well. So you, you never yeah. know, he could be one they look at. Good I was name. down in the media room at Burnley last week. Yeah. Someone someone threw a name at me that was Dan Ferguson, yes. Sir Alex's mm-hmm. boy, but yes. mm-hmm. I don't know if. That was. I think he has been mentioned, but uh, oh, along, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah alongside yeah. A, a good number of of, uh, of names. Vincent Company? No, it's not for him, is it? No, no, <laughs> Vincent yeah. Company. How was he? Were you speaking to Vincent? Yeah. No, uh, but his yes. team, no. his team absolutely yeah. deserve to win. Yeah. I mean, they play football from the from the corner flag. It sometimes it, it's killed them this season, but I think they're going to go down, uh, and I think they'll stick with them to try and come back up at the first attempt. They love him there, but it's maybe is it, I don't want to say naive. He's won everything in the game, but he stuck to his principles, you, hasn't he? Well, when you've been alongside Pep Guardiola yeah. and Mikel Arteta, and that's the way they play, um, I think that's the way he's going to continue to to try. But at times you've watched them, and they're just not good enough to yeah. do it. So um, I don't know whether he'll change slightly. So international duty tomorrow night. We're just over a day away from the Netherlands against Scotland. They flew out from Glasgow today after uh, the training there since what Tuesday. John Carver has been speaking to the media um, about the run that Scotland have been on and uh, the hopes for the coming days. We need to continue that. You know, it's no good just thinking that we've done well to qualify and that's it. We, we've set a standard now, and every day when these guys come here, they, they try and raise the bar, and I think that's very important. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and say we're going to do this, this and this. What I am going to say is we're going to try and improve and get better, which is one of the reasons why uh, pre-Euros uh, we actually played against the side that we played against for the experience. I mean, we've qualified for the Nations League and we've got difficult teams in that as well. So we're going to play. The good thing is we're playing regular football at the highest level. Andy, what were you thinking when you saw us play the likes of England, Spain, France? And just as he mentioned, we've got to learn... Can you think what you thought? Well, when I saw us up against England, I thought, wow, yeah. a real golfing class here. Yeah. I mean, Bellingham is outrageously mm. skillful yeah. for, for one so young, so dominant in that game. And they would certainly be my favourites uh, this summer. Uh, as much as we all hate to say it, England look really good. When you look at them from middle to front, the options that they have are frightening more than any other of the big nations. But... Um, yeah, I, listen, I think we've got a chance against Germany, who are not at their best, and we do play a really good game when we when we defend well and hit teams on the counter-attack. And uh, I think we've got every chance of doing really well if 
we get a, a good result in the opening game. I was at that game, the England game. It was a yeah. guest of Hunter and Hockey. Yeah, yeah, uh, who'll be on on Sunday morning, and Marcus Rashford to see him in the flesh. What a player as well. And I know he's not at his best season, although he did well at the weekend. But you could see a golfing class. Yeah, these boys down in England, they can turn it on and off whenever you want, whenever you're not expecting it. They can pop up with a goal. Uh, Rashford's definitely one of them. But like Andy said, in Bellingham, they've got one of the best players in the world at the minute. Uh, so it's hard to see them uh, not doing well in the competition or even going all the way. Where do you think we would be looking to improve? Everyone has said about the striking position. Um, there's not that much option. Everyone's talking about Lauren Shanklin. We know about Lyndon Dykes, who's not played that much recently. Um, and Shea Adams up front. Would you start with Lauren Shanklin for tomorrow night? I, I think he'll go with uh, Shea Adams. I think he's been the one that's played in the bigger games where you kind of need to be structured behind the ball. He's got a bit of pace. Uh, he's got a bit of strength about him. And he, and he does score some goals. So I think if you're going up against big teams, I think he's probably going to go with Adams or even bring Dykes on later on in the game. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And I think when you look at our squad overall, real quality in terms of uh, goalkeeper, defenders, uh, left and right, midfielders, left and right, good defensive midfielders, attacking midfielders. But up front, you're, you're dead right, Paul. We don't have a lot of options. I think Shea Adams is our best option. Lon Shankland obviously will get a bit of game time as well, but yeah. not a great deal of options. And it's a great pity that Lyndon Dykes is more or less out of the, the team at QPR. He doesn't start many games uh, these days. Well, I've already, ex yeah, I've, I, I've already experienced it because all I've been doing is going to watch games for the last four months. And every time I walk into a stadium, whether it's in England or Scotland, to watch the players, everybody's talking about it. The fans are talking about it. The board, people in the boardroom are talking about it. And, and I've got to calm myself down sometimes, you know, when, when, you, know, when you go in there. But... Everybody's talking about it. There's a huge difference to when we qualified the, the previous time. And I can sense that because obviously it was a difficult situation with COVID. So fans weren't allowed in. Now, I mean, everyone, I, I mean, I've now got so many Scottish friends want to go to the Euros. They're coming out of the woodwork, left, right and centre, looking for tickets. But everyone I speak to is going there. Not everybody's got a ticket, as we know. And when we went across to have a look at the facilities, they were talking, expecting around about 100,000 in Germany. And that's incredible. So I'm, I can't wait to say that because, again, it was limited crowds the last time we were in the Euros and that was my experience. And it will be very different, won't it, with a, a packed Allianz Stadium when we get there on the 14th of June from what it was. I mean, Wembley was, what, 20,000 uh, the last time at the Euros? Well, thankfully, we've, we've got full stadiums. We've got the full uh, enjoyment for, for every supporter of, of every nation, especially the Scots who've been, my God, they're desperate to, to give, uh, just to portray our nation in a good light, as I'm sure they will do. Um, and I think that the whole tournament will be a better one for, for us being in it with the, the amount of supporters that we'll take, the amount of noise that they'll make, the amount of backing that they'll give to the team. And I just hope we can give them something to cheer about, especially the first game. As long as we don't lose, we, we've got every chance. And Germany, Andy said it, they are not what they were. They're in a period of flux. Do you think we've got a chance? We've certainly got a chance. I mean, they're calling up Tony Cruz, obviously yeah. a fantastic player, but yeah. they're bringing him out of retirement because they've been struggling that much. So the first, it's the first game of the tournament, am I yeah. right in saying that? Yeah, so uh, it's going to be a big carnival atmosphere and... It's, it's, it's exciting even the now a couple of months away it's, it's, it's going to be a good game to watch are you going to be there do you think uh, I would be doubtful uh, I think we start back training maybe a couple of days after that so really yeah uh, I'll be in Spain for I think one of the games uh -huh. just watching it in a nice bar it's in Germany it's not in Spain <laughs> exactly breaking that. news it'll be great <laughs> I'll certainly be watching it with my dad in a pub or something like that somewhere that'll be, that'll be good you'll be down in uh, Marbella or somewhere <laughs> yeah. somewhere close by somewhere um, can't wait for the Euros that will be here before we know it more from in fact let's hear from someone who played at your old club Hebs Ryan Porte is speaking about the squad mentality yeah I think just with the size of the squad and the amount of competition that's there um, I think the closer it gets to the Euros obviously everyone is, is right at it but to be fair listen that's the kind of standard that everyone's set for the last you know three four years within the group and you know with the group getting bigger you know the 
the kind of appetite for places, you know, is going to increase, and you know, I think everybody wants to be a part of it, and they're they're showing out there. Now, nah, listen, there's not really conversations like that. I think everybody's kind of on the same path to to make sure that you know Scotland as a team and as a a kind of nation grows uh, on the pitch and off the pitch, and you know, I think we've done that. Uh, but you know, with big games coming up, that you know, that's where we can kind of show, and that's where we can kind of speak about it, you know, on the park. And yeah, I think we'll just keep doing that. Jamie, he's been a find. He has, yeah, that's the most sensible I've heard him talk as well. <laughs> you know him well. Uh, no, it's good to see him doing well at Scotland. Uh, that was his plan all along. He was at Hibs. I know they offered him a couple of contracts, but he really wanted to get in that Scotland squad and it wasn't quite happening for him while he was at Hibs. So he's made that move down south and by and large I think he's done great for Watford. And, and you can see that when he plays with Scotland, he's got that real confidence. He gets on the ball, he tries to make things happen from the back. And he defends well as well, and he's been he's been one of Scotland's top performers over the last couple of games. And when you when you see what he's up against, Paul, you know the every week in the championship you're up against a giant, you're up against a a real physical presence, and I think he enjoys that. I think he's a decent footballer as well. I think he can play. I think he's got the ability to to play a pass, spot a pass, and break forward out of defence. That's uh, that's one of his strengths. But um, you know we've got him. We've got. Um, you know, Jack Henry, Liam Cooper, Kieran Tierney can play in the back line as well as um, John Souter. So we've got decent options there, even allowing for, you know, Scott McKenna uh, pulling out and Grant Hanley the day before, I think. Well, we don't think he's going to call anyone up. On Porteous, uh, Billy's been on asking, was he his own worst enemy, temperament-wise, in the early days when he was at Easter Road? Yeah, but you don't want to take that out of no. a player like that, uh, especially a centre defender. You need to have yeah. a bit of that aggression about you. Uh, I think maybe the best thing for him was to maybe move out of Scotland and, and try something different, get away from the old goldfish bowl as we talk about up here. Uh, and, he, and he's definitely flourished from, from going down south. The more I speak with you guys, I hear the Championship seems to be, I mean, obviously the top level is the Premier League in England, but Championship might be the most difficult division to play in because of the size of the, 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 well, the, the country and you play so many teams all over north south east west isn't all you're always on the road peter grant always says that when he was at norwich you were always traveling for a game i would say that yeah that obviously my experience playing in there with brighton we used to fly a lot of the games because brighton was so far away yeah. so there was a lot of times it was a couple of days away here and there you had a game on the saturday there was a game on the wednesday back again on the saturday and all these teams that you were playing were were good sides you know leeds united like sheffield united sheffield united, all these kind of big clubs uh, so it was difficult and that's why you have to have such a big squad down there just to, to survive really we we never flew anywhere at uh, yeah. Sheffield United or, or, or Bolton but um, I think it just shows you the dedication sometimes of the supporters who are going to the South East, South West when you're travelling on a Tuesday, Wednesday night you go to Southampton, uh, Bournemouth yeah. uh, down to these places uh, Brighton even um, you're, you're getting back at four five in the morning some of these uh, some of these guys their, their dedication is uh, fantastic but it's a real slog the 46 games but it, it's a great division to play in The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property get your home ready for the markets with help from their team of experts Let's go It's the eve of the international games tomorrow night it's Holland against Scotland then Tuesday at Hampton Northern Ireland coming to town, Andy Walker. Do you still call it Holland? Are you allowed? I, I, I know. I've been <laughs> saying <laughs> Netherlands all the time and then I thought, no. The Dutch. The Dutch, yeah. <laughs> Jamie, your keeper's right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's Netherlands. but I, I remember I got a row. I it's hard not to Holland. say Holland. Did you? I, yeah. was doing a, I was doing a game in London, called them Holland. Okay, it's yeah. not Holland. <laughs> I thought they were in the World Cup final. Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. They say Holland was a yeah. part of the Netherlands. They do, absolutely. Get it right. right let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> Headlines tonight. Um, Matt Arelli, it's not a headline, but he's been talking about the fact that Atletico Madrid were in for him. It's in a Danish magazine. So, Andy, in cases like this, there's always interviews around about international time, isn't there? Yeah. And he's saying, yeah, sure, it was cool to be mentioned by a club like Atletico Madrid, but. He is also enjoying life at Celtic. There's almost nothing to see here, isn't there? Because he's a player that's brought for, bought for one and a half million and they're going to sell him. But they not not during this season. No, not during this yeah. season. The opportunity was there and I, I know that his form has dipped. I thought he was absolutely sparkling in the early weeks, maybe months of the, 
the season he looked to, he looked to be in really top form. Some of the goals that he was laying on for Kyogo, especially in the Champions League, it was just uh, that was him at, at his best. Uh, he's fallen away a bit from his top form, but I think he is the type of player that would attract interest from a club like Atletico Madrid because he's he's at that age. He's just beginning to get international experience. We've all seen his quality here in, in Scotland and you know that is Celtic's model. Get them in young, fatten them up, sell them on. Have you played against him? I have, yeah. yeah. He's a terrific player, obviously, yeah. coming from down south. Yeah, I think it was Fulham he started, maybe. Uh, it was, uh, yeah. So, yeah, he's come up here and he's, he can, he's shown that he's great technically, he's fat, he's strong, he's quite a big boy as well. So, it's it's going to be hard for Celtic to keep a hold of him. I know mid season's ideal not to sell him, which they've done, which is probably the right thing. But when if they come back in, in the summer with a bit more money, then I think he's probably going to be out of there. What about Paolo Bernardo? Today, that was one of the headlines. Celtic would like to make it permanent in the summer. Was it about six million? It would be at Benfica. <sighs> it seems a bit steep if it's six mm-hmm. million. If that's the type of fee that you have to pay, uh, I look around Scotland and, uh, you know, for example, Lennon Miller at Motherwell. I think he's got great potential. Celtic, I've got a long history of going to get players like Stephen Pearson for Motherwell and midfield. Um, who was the other one that they had uh, recently? For God, uh, like David Tumble. Good friend, David Tumble, but my yeah. good friend Phil Adora was sadly no longer with us. But um, And yourself, Andy Walker? Yeah, I'm yeah. just talking about the midfield yeah. uh, players oh, sorry, yeah. that they've signed. And, uh, yeah, Lennon Miller. Andy, be all right. Lennon, anyway. Lennon Miller, I think, is, is someone who will go on to bigger and better things. But £6 million for Bernardo, it seems very steep. It's a speculation. What about that Lennon Miller one for Celtic? He's shown he's an excellent player. It doesn't matter what age you are, 17, 18 years old. Uh, speaking with some of the boys at Mullow, they, they, they rate him really highly. And obviously he's a big, he's a big tall boy as well. It's not as if he's he's a little 17, 18 year old. He's uh, he's got a bit about him. He's got a bit of physical presence, so he could be one that they well he should be one that they're looking at. And uh, Bernardo, what do you make of him, Jamie? He's he's obviously a good player. Is he a six million pound player for Celtic? I don't personally think so. I think for that kind of money, you're looking at someone who's really going to change your team and be a big influence in the team. And I just don't quite see him being that. I think the the amount of players that leave Benfica for that type of fee, I think is it's an easy thing to hold on to. Um, as a Celtic player, I thought, I mean, obviously his big highlight was scoring against Rangers and then he got a goal at Dundee, I think. He was on a bit of a... Uh, you know his best run at the time he, he looked to be influencing games I thought he played really well at uh, St Mirren when Celtic uh, won there early in the year but I just think it's a it's a lot of money for for someone who's played a decent amount of games but not really impressed that much other than that the uh, little purple patch that he had there's been a lot of um, ineffective games that he's played too Does he look a little bit complacent at the time? Maybe that's, I mean, a bit, that's too strong yeah probably. I wouldn't yeah. say complacent I mean obviously he's coming in a different country uh, working under a, a new manager who is also trying to make his own stamp you know having been here before when the football was sparkling not been not been so great this season and then obviously you've got the pressure now to deal with of uh, a real title race mm-hmm. your, your, your biggest rivals there's every chance they could win it too that is too strong a word, complacent. I'll take that one back. Take Casual, back. maybe at times he looks, but it's just, maybe the language way. Yeah, it just drifts yeah. out of games, yeah. maybe a bit easier. I mean, we've all done it, especially mm-hmm. at that age. Yeah. And uh, But when you're talking about £6 million, you maybe think, well, he won't drift out of it so much. At Rangers, obviously, with uh, Dujon Sterling, that was a big miss last week. We haven't seen you since then, uh, since the Rangers game going out of Europe. Um, disappointment for Rangers but partly tempered by the fact they've got so much to play for in the other competitions it was it was no disgrace going out to Benfica but watching the game there was a chance there for them to maybe win the game ben, look Benfica showed that they're, they're a great side they, they kept the ball well and, and they kept hitting Rangers on the counter uh, and they got that goal which made it difficult but you know if, if you ask Rangers what they really want to win this year it's obviously going to be yeah. the league uh, so now they've got that full focus on that and hopefully they can they can get things right over the next couple of months and trying to get as many players back as possible yeah. it, was a bit, it was a bit daft to make the comparison financially with Benfica you know they're spending more money 
Rangers are up against teams like that every week mm. in, in Scotland that cannot compete with Rangers but they do and lo and behold Motherwell went to Ibrox mm. recently and, and got all three points um, so you can compete against bigger and better teams and I know that uh, nine times out of ten the bigger club the richer club will win but um, you, you just can't throw that out as a, as a, as a reason you, you'll you um, you would expect everyone in Scotland to be saying the same when they go up against uh, Rangers. Yeah, I think everyone thought that as well. If Rangers or Celtic say about the budget comparison in Europe, it's, uh, I was just going to say it's why we play. Uh, if, yeah. if football was was played on who spends the most money, then there would be no point in playing. So it, it's good for all the, the teams that are supposedly lower teams to play and to go at Ibrox and win, like you said, Mullow there. It gives everyone hope, you know that. They're not invincible, these old firm teams. You can you can go there and get results. The big two not in action until, what, a week on Saturday and a week on Sunday. Um, any news, Abdallah Sima? He's back training, back soon? He, he's one I think they'll be hoping he gets mm. back as quick as possible. A bit like Hatati for Celtic, obviously he's been there and done it, but this season Sima's been excellent for Rangers and he's missed it obviously the last couple of months. You want him to get back now for the running, uh, just as things get interesting. And he was probably the first success of the summer signings, Andy. Would that be fair? When yeah, I think a good number of them took a bit of time mm. to develop. And it was only really when uh, Philip Clement came in that he began to get a tune out of these players and he put together a really effective team. And you, you, you've you seen that over the very impressive period where they've had, they've had great results. And, you know, if they've um, been in front of Celtic at, at the moment, um, you know, it just allows uh, Rangers the fact that if, if they draw these two Celtic Rangers games, they've got every chance of winning it. They can afford to draw them. I think a wee bit of extra pressure on Celtic to, to go and win them. For sure. The Dundee game rearranged to April the 10th. Do you have a view on that, Jamie? We thought it might have been the week before, uh, in other words, before the Celtic game, but it's just a few days later. Yeah, it's funny how these things work out and yeah. the conspiracy and everything starts. Like, what what happens with the fixtures? Who picks them? Uh, but you know, Rangers have got a midweek game. Is that, I'm sure it's after the Celtic game, isn't it? Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know, Rangers will be going all out in that game. Uh, so you never know what can happen. And you never know if the pitch will be better as well. That's Quick call before the news. Here's Peter. It's on a Celtic fan about VAR. Good evening, Peter. Good evening. Hi, Good evening, Peter. Hello, Peter. Good evening. Right. Um, I'm going to offer a quick solution to the VAR problem. You need to employ three people, two people for two hours and one person for an hour. Mm-hmm. And I'll assume the people you need to employ. And what the, fuck. The, the rules of football are like the law of the land. If you break the law and you go in front of a judge and he decides what punishment you get, if you break the rule of football, you're in front of a referee and he'll decide what punishment you get. Um, the rules of the law, like the law of the land, are written with two things in mind. There's the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. Mm-hmm. And the two are slightly different. The referees are the keeper of the rules of the law. They know the rules inside out, upside down, back to front. That's their job. That's what they know. But they don't know the spirit of the law. Because to the best of my knowledge, no professional referee in Scotland has ever played professional football. Mm-hmm. So the three people you need to employ, two for two hours, one for another. The two for two hours is two neutral ex-players from within the Scottish football game. I'm just talking about Scotland here. Mm-hmm. Um, so, let's say, if it's a Celtic game, Andy, you couldn't be one of the neutral players because you've played for Celtic, you've got an affiliation there. Right? Hey, Peter, I've they, played with a lot of clubs. Can I, can I not do any games? <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, Peter. <laughs> right. What they do is they three look at an incident in bar and they come to a two out of three bone decision. Did an incident happen or a car? Or did an incident not happen? I'm not caught that the referee either took action or mm-hmm. took the wrong action or didn't take any action and should have took action. OK, right. Right. So well, that's listen, I think we're going to do... Right. We're going to have to go for the news and then we'll come back to it straight after. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get in touch with the team and they'll offer expert advice on effectively presenting your property. Let's go! 
When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market. At Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409. So, our two in Motherwell today, another club not happy with VAR. And on the line, just ahead of the news there, was Peter, who has a solution, he thinks, to make it much better in VAR. So it would be two neutral ex-footballers. Plus, is it a referee who's the other person, Peter? Yes, that's correct. Uh, the, right. same, the referee who knows the spirit of the law mm-hmm. um, and the two ex-players who know the intent of the law. Yeah. Um, that gives you a more rounded view on what VAR is, but need to would obviously need to be employed for every game that the VAR is involved in. Okay. Andy Walker's got a question for you, Peter. He wants to ask you something. So, Peter, I, yep. I, as a former Celtic player, I can't do Celtic games. So that means as a former Motherwell player or Hibs player, I can't do the, their games either. Would that be right? Yes, that's right. If you've had an affiliation with one of the clubs okay. in the past, you can't be neutral. Can I do Rangers games? <laughs> Why not? That's a tricky question. I'm not well, qualified to answer that, Andy. Well, hang on. This is your um, proposal. You need to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I need yeah. to know where I stand. <laughs> can know, I can I do Rangers games? I've not. I've got no affiliation with Rangers. No, you've obviously no affiliation with them, but then you will have an affiliation against them being an ex-Celtic player. <laughs> oh. So they, that would give you a bias that's, to the Rangers game. Well, Why Andy, they, that's yeah. unfair. Yeah. Peter, that's that's just unfair. Because and this is the reason that won't work for um, you know for 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 ex players because I think there's a everyone thinks you're you're, you're biased in some way and I'm I'm not really when I look at a game I'm not really interested in being a, a cheerleader um, I've just done too many games and um, you know you just look at a decision and you call it the the way you think I, it I should don't... be called in 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 all fairness. Okay, Andy, I will take on board your point if that's the way you are, but can you also say every other player out there is the exact same way you are? Well, I'm just highlighting your proposal. I just don't think it's it's going to work. If you're going to have ex-players involved and you're saying that if you've got an affiliation with any team, you can't do them. I mean, I I, I know... Then bring the ex-players up to England. Or Ireland or Wales. No. Just take, take it out with the Scottish game, yeah. so there's no bias involved. That's all I'm saying. The the part I can agree with you on, Peter, is I think that ex players should be in discussion with referees, or maybe not ex players, but current players. Mm-hmm. But during the game, I think I think we have to just leave it to the referees. I think certainly after games, there should be a little bit more discussion on on why decisions were made or what they were thinking at the time, and it would definitely help players. I know, at least. It would be too late, because if you look at a classic example coming up as the two old firm games, a horrendous bar decisions are made there. The financial implications of that are enormous. Sure. Oh, I, 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 get, I, get, I get that, but there is rules, believe it or not, that football players don't yeah. know about sometimes. So if you get stuck in one of them with a current player, an ex-player, as you said, then then it's not great. It's not great. And if you were trying to be fair, which I believe you both would be, You'd still be accused. People would say, Andy, if you give something against Rangers, they'll say, ah, it's because you're a Celtic legend. And likewise yeah. with you, we'll say, Jamie, you played at Rangers, you're a lifelong Rangers supporter, therefore you are, you're biased. And I, That's I know what people a, will say. I know a lot of people talk about, you know, referees declaring their allegiance. Mm-hmm. Let's say you're a referee and you're a, you're a Celtic fan or a Rangers fan. So you can't, if you're a Celtic fan, you can't do Celtic games, but can you do Rangers ones? I, I'm just not sure Peter's, mm-hmm. Peter's angle, uh, I'm not sure it, uh, I'm not sure it, it makes Human sense. nature is people will put a bias on things. Now, not, people will try and be fair and open-minded, but at, all, at times a bias will creep in in most people. Not everyone, but in most, a lot of people, a lot of the time, a bias will creep in. And I'm trying to eliminate that bias, yeah. but that's why I'm saying say, two neutral players for each match. It's funny, Peter, because I've been accused of bias, uh, you know, against uh, Celtic, for uh, for Celtic. 
against uh, Rangers, for Rangers for some bizarre uh, reason. And of course, in, in every other game, it's uh, it's remarkable when you you think of what what people uh, what people's perception of you just trying to be be fair is. Peter, thanks for the call and thanks for staying on over the news there. Um, you need the wisdom of Solomon for that one, wouldn't you? It's going to be really difficult. I'm not up for bringing in referees or ex-players from other countries. No, um, c- you know, certainly not know. when the game's going on. I think yeah. that would take a bit, add a bit of extra time on to what already seems to take forever sometimes. So yeah, I don't think that's the route they're going to go down. But Peter, thanks for that call. People talking about VAR. Yeah. Just to, to say about referees in a positive mm-hmm. sense, I thought the refereeing at the World Cup was excellent I thought their guidance was clearly uh, shaped around trying to keep players on the pitch the threshold for a foul never mind a yellow card or a red card was really high and I thought the games flowed really well and I think the message that this was a great entertainment this is a great sport this can be played at great speed um, I thought it got across to most uh, referees and it's got to be where our referees uh, aspire to I don't know if we've got any going to the the Euros I would doubt it uh, but they, they should be aspiring to get into World Cups European Championships in much the same way as uh, players do but um, I think our our take on VAR our takes the Scottish yeah. take on VAR has been awful and the spirit and the letter of the law that Peter referred to a few moments ago. In the World Cup, we saw the spirit of the law being exercised. It was much better. They wanted the games to go on. They didn't want to send people off on this. They didn't want to chalk off goals if they could help it. It was, and it, and it was clear. I think before the yeah. tournament, they, they released a statement, this is this, this, this is what constitutes handball, which is always the big one. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the highest level of the game and it should be the highest level of referee in which it was. What do you think? Give us a call. Andy Walker, Jimmy Murphy, Paul Cooney on 08 08 17 17 700 or you can join the conversation at Go Football Show or you can WhatsApp a message to 08 08 17 17 700. We're here tonight with Go Green Property. This time tomorrow night, Barry Ferguson will be here with Stephen O'Donnell who, another mother will... Player, there's a mother connection, of course, with you two. Really, so, oh, he did so well, well, didn't he? Played, yeah. so, played so well yeah. at, uh, at Wembley yep. against England when he marked Greeley mm. out the game, I think. He did indeed. That's one for the scrapbook, isn't it, Jamie? Yeah, yeah. Playing at Wembley, playing against England. Uh, Mark and Greeley, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a high point. Let's go back to John Carver, who was speaking ahead of them, heading from Glasgow to the Netherlands for the game tomorrow night in the Johan Cruyff Stadium. Um, and he's just talking about the team. Yeah, we got a couple of guys missing, obviously Callum McGregor, uh, Ryan Jack, uh, Aaron Hickey, obviously didn't make it. But everybody else at the moment seems to be fine. Quite a bit of excitement in the camp, as you can imagine. A long time since we've seen the guys. I mean, uh, I think I've been in hibernation. It feels like it in the, in the cold winter months. Um, but it's great to be back. They've come back, they're reset and ready, focused because we need to get back to winning ways, don't we? You know, we've had a couple of draws and we've had some big games against big nations in the world, obviously France, Spain and, and England. So we need to get back to winning ways against another pot A side in the Netherlands. Um, so looking forward to that, uh, trying to put the Euros at the moment on the back burner. But as you can imagine, there's an awful lot of things going on and we have to uh, look after. So... The guys have had a couple of days and uh, on the training ground has been very good, very enthusiastic and you can see there's a competitive edge there because Steve's already come out and said what he said about we can only take 23 players away so very competitive. Jamie, winning becomes a habit. It does uh, and like you said they've not been together a long time so it might take a couple of days to get back into it but what the what Steve Clark's really done is, is made Scotland like a club team. They're all close, they're all tight, you see them enjoying themselves together on and off the pitch. So that's definitely played a part in the success. And I think in recent years, you've had people falling out with a slight knock and they haven't wanted to turn up for Scotland. I think now you're definitely injured and you've got a serious one if you're not turning up because the prospect of playing in the one of the biggest tournaments, eh, everyone wants to be a part of it. But Kyle Saka has just withdrawn from the England squad. 
on the day when Scott McKenna withdrew from the Scotland squad, but nobody withdraws unless it's a... a well, he's know, a, he's yeah. one of the players yeah. that we spoke about earlier in terms of the options that England have from middle to front when you think of Kane and Saka yeah. and Grealish and Foden, Bellingham, uh, just magnificent yeah. options they have. What did you think of Anthony Gordon then, who, you know, we spoke about it a few months ago, will he play for Scotland because of his grandfather or grandmother? No. He's no, and he's, he's yeah. in the England squad and there's another one, another yeah. option that they have. I don't know whether he'll be going to the, the tournament itself because uh, England are blessed with so many absolute quality players, middle to front, but... Um, no, listen, it's the way of the world just now. It seems as though the, the, the link with getting to... Uh, be a part of any nation is getting softer and softer. But uh, if they're the same rules for everyone, you, you try and take advantage of them and get, get the best available. I see Leicester City breaking news referred to the Independent Commission for an alleged breach of profit and sustainability rules. So it's a lot's happened in England. We know about Everton. Um, well, the timeline will be important because indeed. they're flying high at the top of the championship yep. just now. But I don't know whether that is, uh, you know, Looking back at a couple of years ago, a three when year period, the... yeah, ending. Just see this, Andy. Yeah. Uh, last season, twenty two, twenty three. So right. during the period when um, Brendan Rodgers was manager for most of that period until what this yeah. time last year, and it was well, a great if they, story. If they but, get up, yeah. they're looking at a points deduction or uh, before a ball's wow. kicked. I mean, we're we're looking at a lot of yeah. potential points deduction. You're, you're still talk, waiting for the mm. the Manchester City outcome. Uh, there's another one that we're waiting on just now. And it was we just had the forest one. Forest, as well, yeah, just yeah. had the forest they four one. points. I think they yeah. were four. Yeah, That's four. Right. I think so. Ten for Everton, reduced to what six? Reduced to six. Any other bids? It's, <laughs> exactly. And, and Man City. To be fair, it's only 103 charges, it's and it's only just allegations. Amazing. We can't say exactly that, but you you yeah. would think that um, you know you want all these uh, decisions made. At the start of a season, I mean, you're getting them made uh, halfway through. And even now, at the tail end of the season, where, you know, everything is so crucial, every point is so important. Jamie, the under-21s in action. In fact, 7 o'clock, only 45 minutes away. Uh, Kazakhstan playing um, at St Mirren's ground this evening. It's a big one for them. Uh, there's a chance there to qualify uh, for the Euros. I think they're in second place at the minute. So, uh, with Spain ahead of them. So if they can get that first or second place, you know, you get in that playoff. Maybe I think the top, the best place, second place, get through and then there's a couple in the playoff. So it's definitely in their hands. Uh, they've got some good young players in there. Young Josh Doig over in Italy playing now, scoring under 21s. And it's a, it's a great stepping stone for these players to, to go out and, and show they can do it on, on a big stage. Andy? I, I, I don't know about you, Jamie. I had uh, one uh, under 21 cap. I, yeah. I, I think I was actually an overage player. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was just at the time I was joining um, joining Celtic. We played Belgium, beat them one 0 at Falkirk's ground. Would you believe the old uh, the old Brock, Brock, Brock yeah. Why? Um, <laughs> aye, exactly. Yeah. Why? But um, no, it was a good group. John Collins was playing. Gordon Jury played. Duke Box. Um, yeah. Joe Miller, Peter Grant. Yeah. Uh, some good names mm -hmm. I must say I, I love my time in Scotland. Twenty one. Did you? I used to yeah. really enjoy going away. You've got a few caps for them, eh? Yeah. I did. I think. I'm going to boast, but I think it might be in the top 10 scorers, something oh, like that. Wow, uh, yeah. You should boast, so, something yeah, to be proud of. Bit of respect here. Yeah. I'll boast yeah. when I retire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, who's your manager? It was Billy Stark, who oh, kind of, he worked up from the yeah. under-19s oh, and then guy. went up to the under-21s. And I remember, I still remember him saying at the start of the, the qualification campaign, uh, there, was, there wasn't many of us playing in, in the first team. And he said he hoped by the end of the campaign there was, there was more. And he was right, by the end of the campaign we were all in the first teams of the teams we were at and we were doing well and we were so close to qualifying for the Euros I think we lost the playoff to Iceland at the time so, uh, It was a difficult one to take at the time but then you look, it was the same Iceland team that went out and, oh, and beat England and, They and astonished really everyone, didn't they? Yeah. It was their best team for the last 20, 30 years so yeah, yeah. we were really unlucky I'm looking forward to the game tonight when Wales play Finland. Yeah, of course, yeah. And uh, you know, I remember doing a Finland game. I know Glenn Kamara will probably mm, play, yep. but I remember doing a Finland game a few years ago and Timo Puke, I think he had about 105 caps at yeah. the time. He, he must be up to 115, yeah. 120. He was a big player for them for a good few yeah. years there. Anyway. Yeah. 
He was a while ago, he was at Celtic, but of course he only left Norwich not that long yeah, ago. Yeah, just didn't, last summer? didn't yeah. really work out for him at Celtic. That can happen. You see what's happened with Mikey Johnson. Mm -hmm. he, he was yeah. always under a bit of pressure, but he's been given a new lease of life. He's down at West Brom. He's he's tearing it up and uh, everyone everyone's loving him the way he's playing for West Brom. Do you think it's just the pressure is off when you leave the big two, if you leave Celtic? Just different surroundings. He's got ability. I think he always had a uh, good ability. I always remember that chance he had in the cup final against Rangers when he was through one on one. Had that gone in, might have changed people's perception of him getting him uh, getting such a big goal. But I like his ability. I like the fact that he's always prepared to take players on. He's he's the type of player that will always take a risk. And um, I think he'll probably end up staying at West Brom. It looks as though it's a uh, a great move for him. It's good for him then, isn't it? Because I think so, yeah. you know, I think a lot of Celtic fans liked him. Yeah. He had some moments of uh, real brilliance, but yeah. you just didn't see it enough. Yeah, I, I think that's really fair. But um, you you always need to have really good ability to succeed, and I think he's got that. At a good club. At a good club, yeah. yeah. And and what it shows is he's got that hunger and desire inside yeah. to say, maybe I'm not being a success at Celtic. I'm, I've got a chance here now to prove people wrong, go down and do well. And he's done that so far. Yeah, they're in the. They're in a, I think they're in a playoff spot, so they've got every. I don't think they'll go up automatically, but um, the type of club they got a, a great support and it's a great ground uh, to play at. I think he'll really enjoy his time there. Timo Pukki, what age do you think he is? What is he? Yeah, thirty-one, thirty-three. 34 next week so cause it, it seems ages ago yeah well can you ask me the difficult 118 well 118 ah, you were three out Andy but that's well, well, I, was, I think that's brilliant when I did it it was respect. 100 odd oh, respect it, that, is, that is great yeah. to to be so committed mm. to your to your country turning up your your fitness your uh, determination yeah. any other questions about Timo Pukki while I've got it open <laughs> here in Google yeah. he's got a few goals I know that I let's know check Jamie see how many goals he got for the under 21s for Scotland 6 or 7 or yeah brilliant 08 08 17 17 700 the countdown is on to the game tomorrow night 7.45 against the Netherlands let's hear a bit more from uh, John Carver about the goalkeeping position 4 it's going to have to be 3 come June well, I mean, that'll be down to Steve and who he selects, but what it has added, it, it's added a huge amount of uh, competitiveness. And we've seen that yesterday, because every single one of them was right on it. Normally the first day, they eased the way in, but we had a small side of game at the end of, towards the end of training, and the four goalkeepers were outstanding, so it's going to be very competitive, but they know, and we know, that we can only take three goalkeepers to the Euro, so from now to, till then, there'll be an awful lot of observing, We'll be watching the games along with Chris Woods, the goalkeeping coach, and, and then they'll, uh, the manager will have to make a decision. Jamie, for you, who would it be? It's always cruel to say which one wouldn't go. And things could change in the next two months, but who do you think? I think you're, you're looking at one of Clark or Gordon. It's very rare that you take two goalkeepers from the same club. One of them is obviously not going to be playing. So I think that's going to be a, it's going to be a difficult decision either way because Kelly and Gunn are doing so well. Uh, Clark's obviously doing well just now but Craig <laughs> you get my question myself here because I yeah. think Gordon coming back he's got that experience he's been there so it's a very difficult decision I would take Gordon I would take Gunn and I would take uh, Xander Clark I think mm. uh, Liam Kelly might be the one to, mm. to miss out but it, it's strange having four <laughs> in a squad at the moment why don't you just make the decision now yeah. have, have three goalkeepers sure. and mm. um I always remember Tommy Burns talking about that. He was in a, he was in a Scotland squad, wasn't he? And there was like, I think it might have been twenty six players were named, and only twenty four could go. And it was actually Jock Steen that uh, that left him out, and it was a sore one for Tommy. He always used to, mm -hmm. he mentioned that a couple of times just when we were were chatting about international football, uh, just the, <laughs> just the way it was handled. It, he he thought it could have been handled a lot better. Yeah. Absolutely gutted. Um, he wasn't was, on the plane. I remember I that eighty two. I was going and, to see him. We yeah. the, the media were on the plane. Ah, uh, you were there. Um, I was. Covered I was on tournament. the plane, and he Brilliant. wasn't. Yeah, down there at the La Rosaleda Stadium in Malaga, yeah. and then Fantastic. up we played Brazil in uh, Seville. Seville. Yeah, it was it was phenomenal. Great, but we should have. Well, we should have gone through. I was a very very young 
uh, oh. reporter at the time, but it, it was amazing. Jockstein, he was great, actually. He was uh, yeah. good with it. But I know for Tommy Burns, um, it was so disappointing. Alan Ruff was the goalkeeper as well, I remember. Ruffy, yeah. And Patrick Thistle went down that season. It's not often <laughs> your team goes down and you're the international goalkeeper. Ruffy was great. Yeah. I mean, I, I was fortunate to have a... I don't even know if it was a full season, but uh -huh. he, he certainly came to Celtic when we had a problem with Packy and Ian you know, Andrews were injured and... And Ruffy came, he played the pre-season, I think he played the early part of uh, the season. And uh, brilliant company, brilliant uh, personality, brilliant character to have in your dressing room. How is Pat Bonner? He would enjoy... Packy, St. Packy St. was great. Yeah, yeah Packy was... Yeah. Uh, Packy's probably the the best goalkeeper I played with. Funny enough, yeah. uh, maybe the, the one who would push him close would be Alan Kelly, another... Mm -hmm. Uh, Republic of Ireland goalkeeper I played with him at Sheffield, Sheffield United. United he I was remember. also yeah. uh, top class. As good as Pat Bonner. <sighs> oh. uh, if you had if you had to push me, I would yeah. choose Packy. But yeah. but yeah, there wasn't a great deal to choose between the two. Best goalkeeper you ever played alongside Jamie Murphy, Alan McGregor. I think for me. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes he he gets a bad rap from the outside, but when you work with him every day, you see how hard he works, how he does his stuff in the gym, how he prepares for training. Mm -hmm. And then there was just some days where if you were doing shooting, you couldn't score past him. Really? He yeah. Was, it was yeah. really, he really trained like he played every single day. I don't know what the bad rap was. Was it maybe in the, I think. I think he liked to go out now and again. I, yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, indeed. But I mean, it's a character in the game. Let's not all be vanilla. Oh, he was absolute quality, wasn't he? And big saves, important yeah. saves, big moments. The, that UEFA Cup final uh, run yeah. that we were talking about earlier, he was he was a big part of that. Was it Werder Bremen? He made a one. Ah, save there was some sort of it? double save or something. Yeah. Worst keeper ever? No, that's unfair. <laughs> I'm kidding. There's a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> name names. No, no. And who's the best keeper you played against? Who would you say? Oh. And you played against some top Well, keepers. Jamie's yeah. thing just now, sure. but in yeah. my time, I played mm -hmm. obviously against Andy Gorham, who was yeah. outstanding. I always felt uh, Schnelders uh, yeah. was good. Taylor Schnelders at Aberdeen. Uh, yeah. And I played against Shelton uh, down in England. Obviously, he'd had his mm -hmm. better days, but mm -hmm. I mean, he, he still had that aura. That Where was he authority. playing then? Was he was playing for Derby. I was playing for Newcastle. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I played against mm -hmm. them with, with Bolton as well when he. When he went towards the end of his career, I think he went to Plymouth, and um, yeah. I played against mm -hmm. them there. Plymouth wow. are in the in the championship mm -hmm. uh, now, but um, yeah, have, there's a good number of have you, great goals. Have you got an affection for Newcastle? Yeah, very much mm -hmm. so. I always enjoy being there anyway mm -hmm. because the the people are very much like ours, mm -hmm. the Glaswegians. They are they're great company, great sense of humour. They love a night out, um, and I I love. Going to Newcastle, you do any game. It's it's a real treat, and I love the fact it's right in the city. Isn't right it? in the it's just well, there. Yeah. such a big yeah. city, Paul. Yeah. And of course, everywhere you go, it's just the one strip mm -hmm. that everyone wears. So to have one city just uh, behind the, the the one club in that city, Newcastle, where you get fifty two thousand every mm -hmm. home game, it's really impressive when you um, when you see it just uh, five minutes before kick off. Yeah, I was going to say that. I've just thought of the goal. Yeah. Was, but it was uh, probably Ederson. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was like a centre midfielder playing in goals. I've never really seen it like that before. Yeah. But yeah, he was outstanding. What a keeper. Fantastic. Amazing. Yeah. Some of the quality keepers. And it's changed now, yeah. the goalkeeping position. Packy yeah. would be struggling with the ball. Yeah, distribution. He would, oh, yeah. he was hopeless with the ball. He, saved. <laughs> he could make saves, but he, could he, punt it. he struggled yeah. to take a goal kick. Never <laughs> mind control. <laughs> right, let's call. Is he still in the mounds? Right, let's call him now. <laughs> And put them on. Andy Walker and Jamie Murphy, it's International Week, so uh, I see some radio stations, Talk Sport, were doing their own trophy today. They did a five-a-side thing. It's just oh, different, yeah. isn't it? You do miss, we do miss the domestic games and the European games. And it's yeah. um, obviously tomorrow night, we'll be right up for it. Um, and this time tomorrow night, we'll be ready for kickoff. Netherlands against Scotland. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get in touch with the team and they'll offer expert advice on effectively presenting your property. Let's go! Go Radio Football Show, Paul Cooney, Andy Walker and Jamie Murphy, who's in action this weekend in the Championship. It's the title that everyone wants, but is it going to be Dundee United or Wraith Rovers? Who is going to win it? Jamie, who do you reckon? Big disappointment for Dundee United last weekend. Yep. Uh, they've certainly looked like the best team, but they're, they're not pulling away, and Rafe Rovers are, are, are keeping up with them. So it's going to go down to the wire. Uh, it's exciting for Scottish football. The championship's obviously a level before the, uh, below the big one, but 
Yeah, there's a lot of good teams in there. Sure are. Andy, what's your latest? Fancy thinking? United in yeah. the end. Mm. Just, uh, I think they've made a real, you know, hard job of it. They should be, <laughs> they should be well out in front. But I think they might just go over the line. And no matter who finishes second bottom in the top flight, I fancy them to take care of, I'm assuming, Wraith Rovers. Yeah, Rovers, they had a chance at the weekend, but it didn't happen for them. Yeah. Um, and Livingston, is there any chance to... What, no, chance I think Livingston are gone, and you're looking at uh, Ross County, St Johnston, surely not Aberdeen. You think Aberdeen can get away from that trouble, but uh, maybe Ross County or St Johnston. Uh, and I think if it was one of those two, they would have too much, over two legs, for the likes of Wraith Rovers. Would you reckon? Well, there's always a chance here United are in there. We're not giving exactly. up hope yet. Good. So, yeah. Uh, well said. It's but it's always, it's, yeah. <laughs> I'll get a pat on the back for the yeah. gaffer tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, it's always going to be difficult, especially the way it's it's worked with the. You have almost four games before you play the big one, so it's going to be difficult for for teams in the championship. But you know that's why they're there. A bit of excitement, and you never know what could happen. You don't know. With Dundee United there, it's the out and out favourites and the biggest budget as well, Andy. They it should be put, clear, yeah, shouldn't they? They should. They should be clear, yeah. and uh, you know it's always designed for the top flight club yeah. to to stay up. That, that's that's what it was bought into. I mean, I think the the playoffs are a brilliant uh, addition to Scottish football. We should have had it long before, but you know clubs didn't want it. And I think now, uh, in every league, when you see the, the playoffs, the, the drama that they throw up is just tremendous. Jamie, you joined life at um, A United under Scott Brown. Yeah, it's been great so far. Uh, we've had re- uh, decent form since the manager's came in. Uh, hopefully looking up the way, not down the way. Uh, with a couple of big games to come, including one this weekend against Queen's Park. And some good players uh, as well at the club. I mean, I know they had a rocky period earlier, but things are looking much better and you could be in that playoff place there's definitely a chance you know it's a strange league you win a couple of yeah. games you're, you're at the top you lose a couple you're down the bottom so uh, you've got to keep on form keep training well keep training hard all the usual stuff and the video I saw of you scoring for Rangers against Air United you were mentioned in the Air United team people like Lauren Shangland yeah they were a good side at the time I think Forrest uh, Alan Forrest yeah. actually scored uh, the first goal and we we, we we were one 0 down. I remember that, and a snowy day uh, in January. But uh, I've got fond memories of it. It was my first goal for Rangers, so it's uh, it's definitely a highlight. Andy's been on, strangely enough, as Andy asking both of you, what about John Souter and the form of him this season, the consistency, and also in the Scotland squad and could well play. Yeah, I, th- I think he will play, and just thankfully he's fit. Yeah. I mean, he's had a torrid time with uh, terrible injuries. It's good to see him fit. The fact that he's had a good run of games, he's played at a good level. Played in European football, where you know the challenge is uh, a wee bit extra special, and he's he's looked the part. So I have got no doubts if he was given the nod tomorrow, he wouldn't let anyone down. Nor nor would he worry to play in the the Euros himself. I think I think he's he, he's a player with great ability. Yes, he, he seems a sort of calming influence. Would that be fair? Yeah, he's excellent on the ball. You see, I mean, an assist at Ibrox a couple of weeks ago that was was out of this world. So I think definitely the European games have probably helped him. Uh, you know he's played in the SPL all his career, so to get that experience of going out and and playing big teams like Benfica, playing against the best teams, uh, it's definitely going to help with Scotland anyway. It sure is. Uh, Jack Henry has been spoken about by John Carver. A lot of people surprised that he went to the Middle East in the summer. What does the assistant manager feel about him? I watch it on. We have a, um, a Y Scout, so I watch his d- games the following day. And I've seen quite a bit of his games. And some of his games have been quite competitive against al had in particular, um, where it was a real tough game for him. And he was right at it. But some of the games are not of that standard. So I then have a conversation with Jack and just said, listen, Jack, you have to play at that standard every single week because you can't switch it on and off like a tap. So I've actually spent a little bit of time watching because uh, I know the Netherlands manager was out there Kuma was out there with his assistant watching him a couple of weeks ago because he, he popped up on TV. So you never know, Steve and myself might get a trip out to Saudi in the future. He's got so much talent. Were you surprised, Jimmy, when he went there? Yes and no. You, you can see why. Obviously, the money's too much to turn down for, for some people. Uh, 
but like John Carver said there, some of the standard of the games are not going to be what he's expecting. It's uh, and it's a difficult one because he is definitely good enough to play for Scotland, but it's just if he's playing at that level week in week out. I don't think it helps his international future at all, and uh, wouldn't be surprised if he drops out of the starting eleven. It's not a level that you want to be playing at. And as a manager, I don't think you can take any chances, especially when you consider who uh, John Henry is up against. He's up against guys who are playing in the, the Premier League, the Championship, our own Premiership here, uh, where, where the standard is, is better than it is in Saudi. And any drop-off in form, any slackness, he's not getting tested on a regular basis. I think the move out there, it will be financially rewarding for him, but it will hurt his international career, I'm sure. And look at the Jordan Henderson case where, you know, he was there, he yeah. didn't fancy it, no matter what the money is, and so he's now um, in the Netherlands. Yeah, and that yeah. it might still hurt him because yeah. other players have come in and shown up yeah. well for uh, for England. I'd, I'd imagine Rice and Bellingham will be in. You maybe get two wide players, Saka, Foden. You've got you've got Harry Kane as your natural striker. It'll be tough for Jordan Henderson to get a game for England as well. This time tomorrow night we'll have the Scotland team for the game. Jamie, Andy, yeah. What, what would you? Who do you think? Or well, who would you play? You well, were? I've gone for Craig Gordon. The fact that he's back mm-hmm. in the team just to see him back in an international strip, right. see how he gets on against really good opposition. Seventy fifth cap, as you 75 know. Seventy five caps. Wow. Big just, cap. yeah. Fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. And then my back three. Uh, I'm going for Souter, Porteous, and uh, Tierney. Mm-hmm. And then I've got wing backs of uh, Patterson and mm-hmm. Robertson. Yep. I've got the three central is McTominay, uh, McGinn, and Lewis Ferguson. And uh, I've gone with two up front, Adams mm-hmm. and Dykes, uh, right, just to yeah. give Dykes a bit of game time, uh, just to just to get him involved. And I know that he does a real, a really good job for for the team when those fullbacks, you know, fall back in to make it a five. He's the type of guy that can fall back in and help out in, in midfield. So he, he he wouldn't just stick to that mm-hmm. that role up front. He's very much a team player. Yes, so what do you make of that? Love? What would you play? What's yours? Well, I, I've yeah. went slightly different. I've kind of went for the 3-4-3 three, three that sometimes he uses. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went for gun and goals. Uh, mm-hmm. he did, he's done well the last couple of games for Scotland. Same back three in Porteous, uh, Souter, Tierney, Patterson, Robertson, wing-backs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've went for McTominay and Gilmore in centre mm-hmm. midfield mm-hmm. with Armstrong, McGinn, mm-hmm. just behind Shea Adams. Armstrong and McGinn. Right, when Shea Adams up front. So both of you don't think it's going to be Lon Shanklin tomorrow night. And Stuart Armstrong in there for you. Stuart Armstrong's yeah. in there. He's mm-hmm. one of the most underrated players yeah. for Scotland, I think. Uh, playing every week down south mm-hmm. at Southampton and has done for a long time. Uh, so, you know, it's always good when some of your players are underrated and they go under the radar, but they're one of, sometimes the ones that keep the team going. Andy, would you argue much if that was the No, the team? there's there's no real argument. Everyone deserves a place in the team. They've all chipped in and done their bit. Um, you know, I think these these games uh, they don't come at an ideal time when everyone. I think everyone's focus really. I mean, Patterson, his focus is on Everton. You know, staying up in the league. Andy Robertson's wanting Liverpool to win a title and maybe a European trophy again. Uh, Kieran Tierney wants to just remain fit and I think he's getting a game now for Sociedad but it's not the best time to be playing international football um, but I think for guys like um, well even John McGinn who's suspended yeah. just now He'll be desperate um, to play Yeah I yeah. think so Lyndon Dykes who's yeah. not getting a game from the start if he could if he could get a start maybe give him a bit of a boost and uh, let everyone know that he's still around and fine for a starting place uh, John Caffer was asked about Lauren Shankland. I think he's been great. You know, I've watched quite a bit of Hearts lately. Um, we were, both Steve and myself were up there when they, they beat Celtic, and he, he just gets himself in the right areas. He, he's a goal scorer. You know, people talk about he doesn't do this, he doesn't do that, but you know what he does? He scores goals, and they're worth a weight in gold. And it's something that we do need. So he's going to add competition with Shea and, and, and Lyndon, which is important. Uh, yep, healthy competition for places here, Ryan Porteous. Probably the midfield, to be honest. <laughs> Listen, the midfield's you know one of the best I think um, that we've had in a long, long time. And uh, but yeah, listen, I don't think there's any easy places up for up for grabs left left back as well. So 
it's uh, no, nah, it's listen. There's a lot of healthy competition within the group, um, and you know that can, you know, hopefully, you know, spur us on, as I said. Jamie, if you go into management one day, it's a problem you'd want to have, isn't it? Too many uh, terrific midfield players. Absolutely, we both named their teams there, and we're forgetting people like Chris Day, Kenny McLean, who's came in and scored some great goals for yeah. Scotland. Uh, so these are players that if they're not starting, they're there to come on. They're ready. Uh, and like we were talking about earlier, these players like going away with Scotland now, so there's no similar, I'm sure there'll be some, but sad faces on the bench, they'll be ready for the game, they'll be up for it, they know they're representing their country and they want to win the game. Possession-based team, uh, the Netherlands uh, up against you know Van Dijk and Nathan Ake, guys yeah. like that. Uh, I don't think they're as, as frightening as they were a few years ago, certainly not when uh, they beat us 6-0 all those uh, years ago, but... Uh, they too will want to be in a good frame of mind, and you know they they'll fancy their chances as they always do at the major tournaments. And if you were a Ryan Christie or a Kenny McLean, they could easily say to the gaffer, "Hey, look, what about the goals I've scored on the way?" I mean, I know it's the friendlies in the next few days, but everyone's got a claim, haven't they, in that squad? Just about to to be a starter. Exactly. I mean, Ryan Christie's playing every week yeah. in the Premier League down south, the biggest league in the world. So and he's playing really well. And that'd be fair at the moment. Yeah, yeah he's taking yeah. his game up. Yeah, with a good side, good manager. Yeah. I mean, they want to play football. So, you know, if he's not playing, then he's a, he's a great sub to come on. He sure is. Yeah, Andy, you see a bit of him, and, and that's what they're saying. I mean, I see the highlights of yeah. Bournemouth. But I, just for tomorrow, I mean, I'm, I just want to see Lewis Ferguson in a Scotland strip and see how he copes, see what he can give us. See if he can come in. I mean, you, you talk about people who deserve a place, but you know, I think maybe Ryan Christie, for what he's done for Scotland, maybe deserves it above uh, Ferguson. But given the impact he's made in Italian football, getting the captaincy at Bologna, just impressing everyone, um, let's just see what he's got. There's maybe one or two players that I've named that maybe won't start against Germany, but you just want to see them in a Scotland strip to see what they can give. Alec has been on saying he likes the fact that you think it's going to be Gordon in goal. 75th cap against Holland. Netherlands. Well, he's what, 40, 41? 41, And yeah. he's had a horrible time with injury, yeah. that, that knee injury where he, um, where he came back. I think he broke his leg. Um, Double fracture. Yeah, it was a bad so the whole, yeah. the whole thing was just so tough to come back yeah. from, especially at his age. And I think it shows you his level of professionalism to get back to this level and he's going to play one of the games at least some of it isn't he and he I will be so. the oldest ever player for Scotland the previous one is David Weir at the moment yep. so, that's, a, that's yeah. another big achievement as well to I know. carry on till that age still at a high high level yeah. it's, it's a big thing played to 105 didn't he <laughs> <laughs> but David Weir what a career as well final straights next the Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Unlock your potential and join the team recruiting real estate agents. Call 0141 374 Let's go! Counting down to kick-off tomorrow night, 7.45. We're 25 hours away from kick-off. The Netherlands against Scotland. John Carver's been speaking about a chance for... still chance for somebody to establish them, themselves as a you know a stick on for the Euros? It certainly is and what I saw yesterday and today because everybody realises we've got three or four regular guys who are normally in the squad who are not here so this is an opportunity for those guys to actually stake a claim and, and prove to, to the manager that they deserve to be in the squad so it's going to be difficult for, for you know at the end for Steve it's going to be extremely difficult obviously you consult with the rest of the staff but it's, he's going to have to make that decision. So the, the more competitive these guys are and the better they do in these games, make his job even harder. But Andy and Jamie, you were happy enough when the word was yesterday that there's not going to be anyone else considered, for example, who live a mentor or whatever. They're not going to now be part of the Scotland yeah, squad. We're going with... 100% but, focus yeah. should now be on how do we get a, a win over Germany, go off to the best possible start. That should be... Um, our mentality. We've we've been Spain. We've we've come up against you know England and we we looked really short. Germany. Uh, I don't think will be as tough a test. But obviously with the you know the home nation, they'll have the majority of the crowd uh, backing them. But we have got the players that can hurt Germany. And if we can get a point or a win, that that should be your focus just now. Nothing else. Jamie, looking forward to it tomorrow night. What do you? I know, it's, listen, it's a friendly, so. It's not. There's no point in saying what do you think the scoreline will be, but what would you be happy with tomorrow? I think Scotland would be happy with a draw. I mean, mm. they're they're 
like you said, one of the best teams in the world when they're on it. They'll they'll have high hopes for the Euros, uh, although maybe their team's not as strong as it's been in previous years. But you know, going to the Amsterdam Arena and yeah. playing there, it's a great experience for these players. So they'll be they'll be hoping to do their best anyway. I don't have the the names that we've had in the past with Holland, but you know, the central defender Virgil Van Dijk is he the best in the world? Would you think, Jamie? Yeah, I still think he is. Uh, certainly, two three years ago, he, he without doubt was. Uh, you know, players get older, they get a little bit slower, but I think he's still playing at a high enough level to be considered as, as one of the best. I really like Saliba at Arsenal, I think he's absolute quality, but uh, Van Dijk, of course, uh, is up there. Any 1v1, he's just got a different gear to others, he's, uh, he, he doesn't panic ever. Um, he's absolute quality, and uh, it's amazing that he had to make that step. From uh, you know leaving Celtic, where he was playing the winning team and playing in the Champions League, but he had to go to Southampton before making the step to to Liverpool. Twelve million, wasn't it? Celtic yeah. got when he went, yeah. and then what was it? Sixty-five million. A lot uh, of money. Yeah, when he went to Liverpool. What yeah. a player! Yeah, it, it, yeah. it helps as a centre half when you're a man mountain as well. Yeah. He's absolutely <laughs> massive. <laughs> Used to see him around uh, Great Western Road. Right. He was up and down there. Uh, what a player he was you'll never forgive Jordan Pickford will you <laughs> although I know it's the the heat of yeah. battle that was a, a bad injury that he got and Ronald Koeman their manager 61 today well here's yeah. another one with yeah. absolute quality yeah. uh, I would say he was actually better than Van Dijk and he's pump Ronald Koeman yeah well, he's changed the, changed the game a wee bit oh, he, yeah yeah and he um, I mean he could play a pass he had oh. composure he could score a goal. He scored the winning goal in the European Cup final, yeah. didn't he? Wimbledon. He did. A free yeah. kick. Yeah. It was a free kick. Yeah, we touch and hit. But he was absolute quality. John Carver is a quality assistant manager. We like the way he speaks about the game. Very straightforward. So, come on, who's going to be on the plane for Germany? Clearly, he's not going to give much away. We have a, we have a good idea, but we're not going to talk about it yet because somebody could come out from behind the cupboard and, and, and just appear. You know, uh, you know, you look at, you look at, I remember the, when we were together in November and we talked about Lauren Shankland and he came in and he got his goal and, you know, he, 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 he was consistently scoring goals in the, in the league, but he came with us and he actually came on and scored the equalising goal in Georgia. Now, now for me, there might be another Lauren Shankland coming from nowhere, up on the rails and, and just appear. But I think, if I'm being honest, Steve has a rough idea. You know, there might be two or three places that are up for grabs and um, we'll have to see who, who takes those spots. Well, we'll find out very soon. Less than three months to go before we are in Germany for the Euros. I see uh, yeah. Robbie Matondo on the bench for Wales tonight. They've uh -huh. got a big game against uh, Finland in that uh, playoff. In Finland, I've got Glenn Kamara playing from the start and Timo Pukki does play as well wow so, so good uh, Scottish interest there is Scottish Aaron Ramsey interest. is he on the bench Ramsey's on the bench yeah so there um, you go how many caps now for Bookie I know 119 <laughs> 119 well, oh well done absolutely hey, amazing not much gets past you does no, it no. <laughs> no well remembered I was about to go to their broth game but I'm glad you um, just saw the, up. the teams coming oh, up there big John Hartson will be looking forward to yeah. that one tonight yeah. you know. I mean Wales have done so well but you mentioned earlier how it's much, the effect it's yeah. the Gareth Bale yeah. effect I yeah. mean pretty much took them there of his own accord the way he was playing the goals he was scoring the goals he was setting up they just don't have that special player again but I think they've got enough to to beat um, Finland and maybe uh, take it from there from there to a broth against Patrick Thistle your old club who's going to win that one to or Saturday who do you reckon Andy obviously a broth, a broth have gone they're yeah. down yeah. and uh, Thistle have still got a lot to play mm. for and uh, I fancy an away win there. Right, big win for the Jags last weekend. What do you feel, Jamie? Yeah, I think Thistle have got too much about them. Mm -hmm. uh, they've had a bit of a sticky spell over the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. but uh, you fancy them to win that. I also couldn't do Partick Thistle games because of former... Oh, exactly. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. another blow. <laughs> what a weekend for <laughs> Brian Graham as well, isn't it? Because there's the women's yes, final, exactly which that. is, of course, Rangers against Partick yeah. Thistle women's. Yeah. yeah. Sky have done a lovely feature on him for the uh, for the pre match, and he's yeah. a busy boy. He's done really well, and he talks about you know everyone uh, underestimating his his team. He yeah. feels as though Thistle can win that cup final on Sunday. What do you think, Dundee United against Inverness? Got to be United. Yeah. They've got yeah. to make use of their home form. They've got to stop these these uh, horrible displays that they're 
they're driving some of their home support away and you just want to get them on side you want to go up automatically you don't want to get involved in the playoffs it would be such a negative uh, for them so they need to go over the line and I think they'll get all three points at home to Inverness What do you reckon? I think if Dundee United want to, to stretch the, the lead at the top and, and push themselves away from Rafe Rovers they've got to be winning that one at home I think. And do you think they will? I think they will yeah Comfortably, I think. Comfortably, yeah. Morton up against Dunfermline. We know the story about Dunfermline last weekend. That's a that's a more difficult one. Yep. You know, Morton at one point were were running away with third or fourth place, uh, but Dunfermline over the last couple of weeks have got a couple of wins and, and they've come right back in there. So, I think I might go for Dunfermline. Going that. for wow. Well, I'm going for the Ton. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, my old mm. uh, teammate and the uh, Millen, who mm, I played with course. it here. Yeah. Uh, he's on the coaching staff oh. there. He's had a, they've had a good season, you know, given the, all, everything that they're up against. I, I fancy a home win. And uh, Andy, Air United against Queen's Park, as you sit 10 yards away from the... Yeah, well, I'm just yeah. hoping the Airs can do it. I mean, I know they've got their struggles and recent form has been has been good. They've had a, a, a lift here and there, but they are still in a bit of trouble. They do still, uh, they do still need uh, a few wins. Hopefully they can get it against Queen's on Saturday. I think they will. Right, and the first division, then Falkirk can come up if they win and if they can slip up. I mean, imagine going through that full season and they're unbeaten. Mm. So it's a tremendous uh, achievement. It sure is. When does Stephen get a game? Yeah, he's been playing. Has he? I played last week. And they won, yeah, indeed. So it's magnificent for them. Final thoughts then, ahead of the game tomorrow night. No surprises, we don't think. I mean, there's... Shankland, nobody seems to think he is going to start for Scotland. I think he'll get some game time. Right. We we, we want to see what he can do. He Mm. might play from the start. Who knows? Mm. He's in the form of his life. And, uh, you know, Stevie Clark, uh, he knows what Jay Adams can can do. He obviously knows what Lyndon Dykes can do. I thought he might give Dykes uh, a bit of game time, especially from the start, given that he's been so crucial to Scotland over the years. He's got a good number of goals. But maybe uh, let's see what Shankland can do in a really difficult environment away from home. It's something similar to what it will be um, in Germany against the host nation. And the manager is very loyal. I mean, we know that over the years. And uh, you imagine that he will start. You think it's going to be Shea Adams. And you played alongside him. Yeah, we actually signed him from Elkiston Town uh, when he was a young 18-year-old uh, Chef United. And he came in and straight away you could tell he had a bit about him. He was... He was a hard, hard worker at training, off the pitch as well. He was a nice kid, uh, and it's great to see him now doing well with Scotland. I'd like to think I had a little bit of pushing him on <laughs> yeah, the Scotland good. thing, but yeah. you, you never know. How were you when you were, did you race each other? How did you do in the test? I might have beat him back then. Yeah. I'd certainly not yeah. beat him now. Oofed. Fighting he, top. He's quite. Yeah. He is indeed, he's yeah. Quite, yeah. Uh, and it's going to be Northern Ireland at Hamden on Tuesday, so there'll be a good house there as well, which is great days. Andy, what do you reckon tomorrow night? Um... I'm hoping we can play well. I'm hoping that whoever gets uh, some game time that's maybe a bit unexpected, mm-hmm. someone like Shanklin, someone like who I mentioned earlier, uh, maybe Lewis Ferguson, mm-hmm. I just hope we can see them um, at their best. But I think it's going to be tough. Um, and away from home, um, I, I don't think uh, the Dutch will lose. Hopefully we can play well and, and maybe get a, a score draw. Andy, thank you so much. Pleasure, See you Paul. again next week. Thank you, Jamie. Good luck at the weekend. Thanks for having me. Thanks game. very much. Great to hear you both. Uh, tomorrow night, Stephen O'Donnell. I'll give his best from both of you for what he did for Scotland good, at the last mo- Euros, wasn't good it? Good man. Indeed. Yep. And uh, Barry will be here. A, a good Hamilton man. Yeah. Can, you, can you ignore him? <laughs> yeah. Steady. <laughs> That's it for now. Thanks so much. We're back tomorrow at five. Coming up next, it's the news. And then... The one and only Joe Kilday. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Start a new career as an estate agent. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go! When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market at Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409.